Hello, it's Jay uh, here with a very homemade introduction to uh, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I decided I would use this for my next uh, Read Out Loud project because um, I was casting around for, okay, what's something that's out of copyright that's in English because that way it's out of copyright and in English versus translations where if you get out of tra copyright translations, they're usually old and can oftentimes be pretty on the creaky side. Not always, but often. And uh, actually a booktuber was talking about how she really only read um, female authors nowadays. So like very, very highly, highly, mostly uh, um, female, female authors. Um, and was noting the fact that uh, a lot of male readers really have a tendency to read majority female female authors, and not the uh, male male readers have a tendency to read only female authors. Where female readers are either uh, have a tendency to be far more balanced, or you know sometimes the other way. I mean, it's funny. She was talking about her own reading. And it's like I don't really have much time for white white authors, white straight authors anymore. Maybe white straight, white cis authors probably anymore, which, you know, that's, it's cool. You know, everyone's got their own thing of like, what's, what's interesting you right now and what your preferences are. And sometimes like, okay, hey, look, I should make a point of actually trying to read, read um, places where, you know, I've, because I think she, she's someone who's probably about my age. And she's like, I've read a lot of male authors. Uh, when I came up, like going, she was talking about like going through college and stuff like that. The majority of the people that she was assigned to read were male authors. And she rem remembers being kind of resentful about that. It's like, why is it only white male authors that I'm reading? Which is a long way of saying she, she also mentioned that, hey, some of my favorite, some of my favorite books are actually written by white male authors. And one of the ones that she mentioned was uh, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which it's like The Scarlet Letter is one of those books that you just get, you hear about a lot. It it's probably gets assigned for schools all the time uh, in, in the United States. I don't think it's, it's not really a staple of Canadian, Canadian here, uh, Canadian uh, reading, but it, it's one of those like, oh, it's a school book kind of it's gets it's thing there but she said no this is like this is one of my favorite novels to to read and i was thinking well like i've never actually read it so this would this is fits my categories wonderfully it's out of copyright there was a uh, version of it on uh gutenberg uh gutenberg gutenberg.org they have a lot of great out of print um, works on there, a lot of classics that you can download for free, and then I can email email it to my Kindle account and read it on my e-reader, which is what I'm doing here. But the, um, the, the volume in question, it's got all of uh, Hawthorne's introductions, but it doesn't have a overarching introduction, which in some ways is good because I find whenever you pick up like a penguin classic of something, they'll have an introduction, which will make, will do a detailed breakdown of the plot in the introduction and completely spoil any kind of discovery you might get. I mean, I sort of know, you know, the Scarlet Letter. I, I sort of know the, the very basics, or I think I know the very basics of the story, but I thought, okay, I'll just do a little Wikipedia research, make that my introduction, and then read the text. So yes, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, American short story and novel writer, born in 1804, died in 1864, sort of in the midst of uh, the American uh, Civil Civil War. Uh, it's the Hawthorne's works feature moral metaphors with anti-Puritan inspiration, considered a part of the Romantic movement, specifically dark romanticism. Uh, themes on inherent evil and the sin of humanity, uh, works with moral messages and deep psychological complexity. And uh, it was interesting to note that the author's great-grandfather, John Hathorne, no W at that point, was a judge who was one of the judges who oversaw the Salem witch trials. So really coming from you know, a certain kind of, uh, certain kind of background. Um, it's funny at, at the beginning of the thing, it talked about how he joined, uh, Brook Farm, a transcendent, transcendentalist community. And I went through a whole rabbit hole of learning about the transcendental movement, uh, only to learn at the, the very tail end of that, that Hawthorne completely hated them 
uh, and had completely rejected their ideas, which in itself is an interesting thing. So, so he was opposed to a philosophical movement, which was belief in the inherent goodness of people and nature, where uh, society and institutions corrupt the purity of the individual and people are best when truly self-reliant and independent. I think this is where you get like Thoreau and Emerson. Thoreau uh, going uh, to his going to his uh, cabin in uh, on Wal Walden on a uh, Walden Pond, um, and and you know becoming having spending a year all alone, which was sort of bullshit. But you know writing re his writings on that of being an individual alone and sort of making discoveries that were original original to himself where you're, uh, you can get original insights with little attention or deference to uh, past masters. So it's very much kind of that American exceptionalist um, kind of we're going to do, uh, do out our own stuff. Um, it's interesting. There is still that apparently we get from French. Uh, one of the other things is from French, uh, German and English romanticism. Yet again, uh, David Hume uh, and Kant and others were other influences on the transcendentalists and while and Hawthorne is also kind of this idea of dark romanticism which I guess is where you get that inherent evil and sin of humanity so it'll be interesting just to, to see I mean these are just kind of like general ideas not telling t telling me about the whole plot of the of the novel or anything like this so the scarlet letter was published in first published in 1850 it was his second novel uh, his first novel was published anonymously and disowned he'd written it much earlier in like 1828 and didn't think it really came up to his his standard so this is like his first kind of like in some ways official and probably best known i would say best known were that in his uh, collection of short stories is the other it's the other the other thing it's set in a puritan massachusetts bay colony during the years 1642 to 1648 so i think that's kind of like around uh stuff like the uh, salem witch trials that kind of you know the puritans and all that uh, this book, this kind, this book, Scarlet Letter, was one of the first mass-produced books in the U.S. Uh, before this point, apparently, um, books in the United States were more kind of hand handmade individually by the by the uh, book by the American booksellers. Uh, this was a um, first. This is the first. I guess it mechanized printing of two thousand five hundred volumes, sold out within ten days. So it was like you know, it was it was a popular book when first published. Um, apparently, uh, when it was initially published, it brought wide protests protests from the uh, natives of Salem, who uh, didn't like how they portrayed in the uh, the introduction, the original introduction, which I'll be getting to very shortly. Uh, and But, you know, uh, critics liked it. Uh, George Eliot, Mary Ann Evans, uh, liked it liked it very much. Um, religious leaders were not so much. Uh, there was uh, one one review apparently is talking about it perpetrating bad morals. So you know all those all the, you know controversy um, all that stuff all the recipes for a bestseller. So yeah, I think that's my initial thoughts on the Scarlet Letter. I think you know the I've only got like you know it's the it's that that Scarlet A that uh, is it Hester or somebody gets uh, put on them for be being an adulterer um, that and kind of shame and and all that sort of stuff I think is where is is the stuff I can remember the only other thing I remember is you know popular culture wise is the god awful I never watched it but I, I saw I saw reports on reviews of the uh, god awful one with uh, Demi Moore and uh, Gary Oldman I think playing the leads and just how awful of a adaptation of, of the book that was and I think that was probably the last major adaptation of the book that uh, has been done for a while it may have been done on tv or something but that was a major movie where it really crashed and burned so yeah yeah that is my introduction to the scarlet letter by nathaniel hawthorne i guess we shall see how it goes from here um um yeah yeah so thank you unnamed uh booktube uh booktuber whose name i can't remember and besides you know it's one of those things of uh, people get really exercised when people say I, I don't really have time for uh, white male authors it's like mm, that that's fine I think we all make our selections for whatever reasons and that's perfectly valid um, it's you know so 
it's interesting that it's in the context of saying like, you know, why don't men read women? But, you know, as part of that is, uh, you know, it's, but it's interesting. There's one thing is like, it's individually, you say, you know, that, that uh, individually you say like, well, that's just not interesting to me. It's another thing when you start, when you start looking at things from a wider, wider perspective and saying like, why on average are men just not interested in the, in the lives of women? And I think she made some really good points of saying that it's it's because in the wider society, um, men are raised to to believe that uh, women's lives are just not that are not as important. What they're interested in isn't really an interesting subject. Um, so I think it's it's got some it's got it's got validity to it. And uh, you know, I, I do try and make a point of reading female authors um, of delving into areas where I'm not, I don't know, don't know stuff. I'm reading Queenie at the moment by uh, Candace, Candace Cardi Williams, those three barrel names just get me, which is um, about a 25 year old uh, English black woman uh, in a very kind of contemporary, contemporary society and her, her sort of um, struggles with romantic partners and stuff like that, which is like, oh, that might be should be considered just a very female book, and that shouldn't interest me as an easily old white dude. But it's like no, no, that's like a different world, and it's kind of cool to get into it. As is as is this, even if it is written by a white male, it's written by a white white male in 1850, so it's well back in time, and it's an a, and then it's him looking back at the even further time back um, to the uh, 16 1600s. So interesting stuff, interesting stuff. I, that's the cool thing about books is you just get transported to different places. And who wants to read? I, I don't read to just confirm my own existence. I read to kind of get outside of my own, my own time, my own head, my own gender, my own sexuality, my own, just, just me, you know, into somebody else. And that's really cool. All right. I will leave it there. This has been a very long and rambling introduction to Scarlet Letter. Shame! More videos later.